Hi, Jade Handy here. Have you ever wanted to send prospects in your industry a message telling them to stop ghosting you? Um, it's it's kind of like, it would be kind of like telling car warranty robocallers to stop calling. It's just not going to happen. Um, it's a futile um, effort. It's not going to happen. But it, I get it. It is frustrating. They ask for all these things. They ask for uh, proposals. They ask for this, that, and the other thing, adjustments, and then they just ghost you. Um, and that's frustrating. It's it's demoralizing. It's frustrating. It's confusing. Um, it's all sorts of negative emotions. Um, and it's a typical perspective from a sales-dependent business person starting over as a freelancer um, after having the security of a W-2 salary. In other words, you come from a job where you work for a company probably and, and Maybe you're not used to having to deal with this. If you're the tradesperson, you're the graphic designer, you're the um, project manager, whatever, you're not customer facing, so you're not dealing with that. And now that you're a freelancer or a small business owner or entrepreneur, and it's your business, now you're having to deal with that. And now you know what the salespeople get paid for. Um, it's a, um, I bet it's atypical for a salesperson or a small business professional with experience. Um, because you learn merely through experience that this is, this is just par for the course. Um, contrast this with the tone of a tone-deaf financial advisor recently on a virtual networking call where he said during a similar conversation, it's a contact sport to me. Uh, it's a numbers game. <laughs> That's probably at the far end of the extreme there. Uh, seasoned sales-dependent, sales-reliant people still feel at least a little bit of this Every time they're ghosted, but they know merely from experience that non-responsiveness is par for the course. And I think that's what the, the Zoom person I just mentioned has over-adjusted for. He's more into the self-preservation uh, end of the stick. And one of the best salespeople I ever met um, used to say, there's a yes behind every no. And that's true if you stick with it. Having to adjust to this mindset many times in, with, in my career, I can tell you that's easy for me to say. But it's not easy for everybody, and I get that. Um, Again, I said shifting to that mindset. Um, the, the very best tactic to diversify your um, diversify this response from customers is to really to diversify your time investments and your mental resources across many prospects. In other words, fill your funnel. Um, having to adjust to, um, I know it's easy to say, it's simple, but it's not necessarily easy, I know. Um, but consider whether you close um, 75% or 50% or 35% of prospects, having one prospect that you're pinning your hopes on is, is obviously not enough. And so you have to fill your funnel. Having one customer you put all your time and mental energy into, and if it doesn't play out, then you're screwed. But if but you're probably not a bat in a, uh, you know, um, 100%. So you've got to put that in perspective get more people on your sales funnel, whatever it takes. And then if you can help some of them and not all of them, that's fine. That's a great problem to have. Um, but um, so again, it's a great mindset. Um, it's, it's not an easy mindset to step into. You'll just learn it through time. If you stick with it long enough, you'll have no choice but to adopt the mindset that I'm speaking of. Uh, but also it helps to get uh, help from a coach that specializes in starting over professionally uh, with a skill set for helping you master your psychology uh, that will help you adopt a more empowering mindset for sales reliant roles as well. So um, when you think of doing something like that, think of me, reach out to me, comment below, connect. Um, you can reach me at email at jadehandy.com. You can connect with me on linkedin.com slash jadehandy, all one word, lowercase, no space. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.